I'm Dade Entenheer, I'm Secretary General of Zaga. And uh, we recently issued a press release about the new Zaga, smart standards, smarter lighting. And in this press release, we stated, besides creating specifications for electrical, mechanical, optical and thermal interfaces for components to be used in LED luminaires, the new Zaga will include interfaces for smart components such as sensors and connectivity modules. It will focus on interoperability and will open new business opportunities in digital lighting and service models. The new Zaga will focus on interoperability and then people ask me, hey Dave, what is that? Can you say a few words to explain that? And I say, hey well, there's no big issue because this concept is well known specifically from the world of information exchanging systems. Okay, it is maybe new to be used in the context of components of LED luminaires, and that's why I complied. Let me then say first thing, Zaga is not inventing the word or doing anything new. The Cambridge Dictionary states, if two products or programs are interoperable, they can be used together. So that's as simple as this. But in this definition of the Cambridge Dictionary, there's still some subtleties hidden. Let me go through them now. And one is, and that's the foremost thing, that this can implicitly refers to a user competence. A user must be able to verify that there are no incompatibilities between a product. Next, a user must be able to actually make things work. Both these two abilities are comprised within the word can. Okay, maybe abstract, let me then give you some examples. Okay, we have here an example of an engineer at a Luminaire OEM. Okay, she may be able to verify that components are interoperable by using thermal simulations if we need to do thermal interoperability. She may be able to make things work by selecting the right connectors and molding and them onto a module and seeing that the driver has the same connector. Okay, and typically that is what we do in Zaga Book 7. It's interoperable and we give an engineer at an OEM the tools to check interoperability and to make things actually work. For an installer at a site replacing components, there's other things at stake when thinking about interoperability. Yes, he may do checks to see if there's no incompatibilities, but for him, checks must be simpler. Must be a label on a uh, package or on a component. It must be some simple calculation maybe, and that's what is within his capability. Then he may use an isolated screwdriver to actually connect the components. He cannot select connectors, but he may use some tools that are part of his trade. Then the next example, an end user may trust that if it fits, if he can connect the component to a luminaire, that it also works. Plug and play. We also have examples of that in Zaga, and we call that book 14, which was a socketable flat system, which is a plug and play system. And then you say, hey, you have nothing for this installer, and that will come, and that's something that the new Zaga will focus on. Okay, what tools does the new Zaga have to address interoperability? There's a number of them. First one is interface restrictions. Simplify the interface. And we have examples of that. For instance, in book seven, we only allow linear models of one, two, and four feet. Nothing else, no one and a half, no two and a half, simple interfaces by restricting the variation in the market. Next, we may use connectors and fit systems to ease installation. We do not rely on people to select their own connectors, rather they connectors as described by Zaga and they can use to easily install a product. And finally, and that's also an important aspect in the new Zaga, we consider all the aspects interface so that indeed a user can verify that there are no incompatibilities. So then, if we in Zaga talk about interoperability and that we will focus on that, I hope with this little explanation it will be easier for you to understand what we actually mean. Thanks for your attention.